Now, the purpose of this video is to show you how to print or record your software drums to individual tracks in Reaper. And I'm going to show you the easiest way or the quickest way to do it. So a project set up here with a bunch of tracks, and I've already programmed a MIDI drum part up here. So we're going to add some drum software to this track. Right click. I'm going to go to my favorites and choose the Stephen Slate free drums. Now this is going to work with any drum software you choose, but I'm choosing this one because again, it's free. And as you'll hear, it sounds pretty good. Looks like this. Let's load a kit, which sounds like this. So now let's hear back this part with the drum software playing on this one track. Now the drums sound a bit flat just coming from this one track. So I like to separate them drum by drum and process them separately. So we'll first go to the mixer in this plugin and set up separate outputs. This will be different for every drum software you use, but it should be pretty similar. For my kicks, I'm gonna leave them on output one and two or stereo output one. Then for the snare, let's use output two or stereo output two for each one of the snare tracks. I didn't play any toms, so the hi-hat, let's use stereo output three, and the same for the ride and the overheads. And for the room mics, we'll use a separate output, let's use stereo four. So we're gonna use four stereo outputs or eight outputs total. So we could create new tracks and just bust them manually, but it's a bit quicker if we do it this way. Open up the plugin again with the browser on the side right here, right click the plugin and choose the option down here to build multi-channel routing for output of this effect. This is gonna create multiple tracks for each one of the outputs we separated. Again, it could be different for each drum software, but it should create multiple output tracks. We'll choose it. It asks us if we want to create all these tracks. Let's do it. And it's going to create a lot more than we need. As you can see over here, let's delete the ones we don't. Let's first rename the ones we want to keep. Our kick, snare, overheads, and rooms. And to delete the other tracks a bit easier, let's open the track manager. Control Shift M on the PC, Command Shift M on the Mac, opens up the track manager, and we'll just choose all these tracks we no longer need. Delete them. Now we just have these already set up, which we could check on the routing on this track, but they're all sending to those tracks. One and two on the kick go to one and two, three and four for the snare go to one and two, five and six for the overheads, and seven and eight for the rooms. So it should be set up correctly, sending to the individual tracks, which we can check by playing it. So the drums are separated. Now we get effects to each one of these tracks, to process them separately. And I've already done this and saved some effects chains for this purpose. So instead of doing it manually, I'm just gonna go to those effects chains. For my kick, I would set up with a compressor and some EQ to boost the low end, cut some lower mids and boost some mids. I'll do the same thing for my snare, go to my effects chains. 
for my snare. This one has a compressor, an EQ that boosts the lower mids and brings up some top end. Then for the overheads, I want to boost the top end and I've already saved that right here. Bring up the top end for the cymbals and for the room mics, I just want to add some compression. And again, I created an effects chain to do that right over here. So let's hear what it sounds like now. Pretty dramatic the difference before and after. One other thing we could check is the routing on this track is now set up with 48 channels. We obviously don't need all of them, so we can bring it down as we're just using eight. It created all of them when we created all those tracks. So now, I want to print all this MIDI to audio on the individual tracks, which you could do by going to record, record the output over here to either stereo or mono, and pre fader, pre effects, but it's a lot easier just to freeze our tracks. So let's select all the drums, right click, and go down here and choose freeze tracks, and let's freeze them to stereo. That's gonna print all those tracks to audio, and it locks those tracks. Let's unlock them. And now we can mute this track, and it won't take up any DSP processing. And it should sound exactly the same as it's all printed to audio. There's one problem with this method. We can't tweak our plugins anymore as they're all printed or frozen. So doing it this way doesn't give us as much flexibility. If you want that, and I usually do, we could do this a different way, still while freezing our tracks. Let's undo that. And instead, let's freeze each track separately using a feature right over here called freeze tracks up to less selected effect. That's gonna freeze this track just up to the less selected effect. But in this situation, I wanna keep both of these effects on this track. So we can get around that by using a dummy effect. Let's double click, let's add a container and put it at the top. And now we could use that same feature using this effect as the last effect that will be frozen. Right click, go to freeze track and go down here to freeze track to mono as my kick track I happen to know is mono up to the last selected effects. And in this situation, it's the container effects or the dummy effects that's the last selected effects. So we choose this. It's gonna print the kick to an audio track in mono, but still leave a compressor and the EQ with the ability to be tweaked or adjusted. As you can see right here, there's our kick track completely printed, but before the effects we added here, our compressor and EQ, and any other effects you happen to be using. And just do that with each one. Let's go to this one and add that container, put it at the top, and to do it to all the tracks quickly, let's go back to our mixer. The container's up here, 
We drag it over to duplicate it. Now open the snare and do the same thing. Go to freeze tracks, freeze track to mono, up to last, select the track. Again, I know the snare track is mono. It prints the snare. But we can still tweak our compressor and our EQ on the snare as it printed just the snare audio. And we'll do the same for the overheads. The container effect was already there, but for this, we're gonna freeze it to stereo. As obviously, the overheads are stereo. But now we can still tweak our EQ on this track or add any other effects we want. Do the same with the rooms. Grab the container, freeze track, freeze track to stereo. It prints our stereo rooms, but without this compressor. So we can still tweak our compressor without having to unfreeze our track. So now let's unlock these two and it should sound exactly the same. Again, to free up the DSP processing on our software drums, we could just mute it. Again, this gives us the most flexibility as we can still tweak all the effects on the individual tracks, our kick, snare, overheads, and room, while still printing everything else to audio and saving us DSP processing over here. But at any point we want to change the drums and do it again, we can unfreeze it, unmute this, and do it all again. Just choose to unfreeze those tracks. It all goes back to the way it was before. But doing it this way, again, is a lot more flexible while preserving exactly what we programmed. So that's pretty much it. That's the easiest way to print software drums in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time.